We're live. We're live. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Nerdy Up North podcast. It's a nerdy podcast and it's hosted by Northern Nerds. I am one of your hosts, Sam. And I'm your other host, Paul, and we are live, honest, 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 honest. governor. We're, we're really this, here. Is, this is going out on the Sunday, the 10th of December. Uh, yeah. Happy, happy Sunday. <laughs> happy Sunday, yeah, guys. Yeah, happy Sunday. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed them Sunday roasts and Chris stopped <laughs> playing me your balls, you dirty bastard. Uh, <laughs> but yes, um, so we are joined by two lovely ladies and Sam. Um, oh. <laughs> sorry, I've been giving a shit tonight. You <laughs> are on the thinnest of thin ice, Mister. <laughs> it's alright. <sighs> um, we've joined with the, this lovely Sonia again. She's, Thank as we Sonia. said last week, this is Sonia's month. She's on pretty much every week until uh, she tells us to fuck off. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> like no not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. And I'm we, never leaving. We're never leaving. And we've got the return <laughs> of the return. The how do we describe Kelly? How what the like mag- if we're gonna magnificent. if we're gonna put Kelly in a box, what kind of box will Kelly be? <laughs> Don't put me in a box. <laughs> the <laughs> biggest fucking box. In. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <brain. laughs> yes, if if you're a fan of the podcast or if you're a first time listener, you're in for a treat, pet. Well, yes. Welcome to Kelly's <laughs> world. <laughs> Funny enough, I do think this might be the first episode where Kelly's been on where we're talking about movies rather than music. Ah, eee, no. Can't Possibly. Be. I know we've done the horror, no, films. horror films and um, we've I did done do the Freddy's. Freddy's. Freddy's, yes. Yeah. Freddy's. But this is our like a proper Freddy's. review. But the Freddy one the that Buffy. was interesting. Yes, the so Buffy. So this is this is the first episode where you're not going to get taken down halfway through for showing videos that you shouldn't. Show. Yes, no, that's me. Yeah, so yeah. Let's not name names. He can remember that. Jesus Christ, when we were watching Freddy and it's got things in. You've been taken down from live just because we're showing too much too much of the movies. Jesus. Yeah. YouTube, you're a bell end. But yeah. Uh, but keep us on right now, please. <laughs> But we love you. Because we're live. We're live. This isn't pre recorded. <laughs> Hello, chat. He's a waffling and about shite, shite again, I can see. Um, Hi, Ben. <laughs> yes. So, um, Sammy, yeah. do you want to do your yeah. fun stuff? Are we doing the fun stuff? You can do you all your fun You can disclaimer. do all your fun stuff. I've been mean to you. I've been mean to you, so you, you can you get make... out with it. This is you making up for us, yeah. right? Hey. How you doing? And what you've been watching? Stuff. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, man. <laughs> hey. Well, this fine Sunday, I've been watching <laughs> <laughs> the Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've, I've rewatched it. And to be honest, there was a lot of the film I did forget, but we'll get into that in a bit. But I'll tell you what, oh, I, yeah. what I have been obsessed with. And it is car crash TV, so it, it is up there with Moonshiners. Um, the Squid Games, The Challenge oh. on Netflix. Mm-hmm. What a bunch of bell ends of contestants <laughs> that, that we that they've got on here. <laughs> None of them have got redeeming feet, like qualities, anything. I think there was only one guy and his mother that was canny, but again, without giving spoilers, I'm not going to say anything because people might not have watched it. But yeah. The contestants are such dicks. But yeah. Does it not die? <laughs> not, well, not, that's what I was going to oh, say. No, this, is, this is the real version. This it? is the yeah. real version that was filmed in the real UK life. where like, they had people all over the world like come. So there's Americans, yeah. Australians, uh, Irish, like uh, all over. But it's filmed in the UK and apparently the contestants are suing the show now because it kept them Amazing. in substandard... Uh, like. Re- re- uh, yeah. things in and it was supposed to be cold a lot of them got hypothermia oh. <laughs> so oh, i think okay. it's like being things be like, like people are like i think there's I-, I haven't watched it but apparently there's something where they have to squat for x amount of time mm. and in the show it's like 30 minutes but they're coming forward and saying they had us there for six plus hours mm-hmm. um oh. so it's, it's like not true to life what they're showing on the show and people are saying like this was like like if anything, this was abuse. It's like borderline, like torture. Mm. But the Jeez. Squid Games, people were killed, so they kind of got off. Yeah, yeah they, they got off right. light. You know they got off light. So like, and, and, they didn't die. And, and you know what? In Fort Boyard, I think they used to get really hurt. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But oh my god! Melinda Messenger, I fucking unlocked. love her. But this is, I mean, I think it I might, like, might get fact checked. But this is the biggest. Uh, prize money for any game mm-hmm. show other than like the natural lottery, national lottery because it's four point five million dollars or something you can win if you mm-hmm. if you do yeah. win the contest. So 
make me squat for 30 minutes. Yeah. Are you going to give us four Make million? Me squat for, yeah, give me, I'll do six, six hours. Uh, I'll I do six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothermia, it's fine. I yeah. can defrost, it's all right. But they do the actual things from the Squid Game. So there's red light, green light, there's uh, marbles, there's the cookie challenge where you've got, a, like, with the needle. Oh, that looks so, so infuriating. So, so you've got all these weird people that's furiously licking the uh, the cookies so you can tell who's good. I thought good, you were going to say nipples there. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to make the joke saying that you can tell who's good at going down because of the way the tongue action, but oh, so, yeah. some, some of them some of them are absolutely useless and sloppy fuckers, but yeah. Um, nice. Nice. But yeah, and they've just done, I've just, we watched last night when they've done uh, the, the glass bridge, but instead of a glass break, it's just like opens up in a drawbridge and they fall down. But oh, um, cool. they come up with a very clever way of doing it. But again, spoilers. Um, but yes, that that's my interest oh. in shitty watch there. Oh well, <laughs> I've obviously watched. I've obviously watched the movie that we're talking about today. It's been done mm-hmm. um, <laughs> twice. Mm-hmm. Twice. Nice, twice. Nice, nice dedication. Yeah, there's, there's a reason for oh. it. Um, oh. <laughs> I've watched. <laughs> I watched the first series of Invincible again because mm-hmm. we didn't realize that it was such a long time ago. That the first series came out, I was like, I generally can't remember what. And like, I know I've got a bad memory, but I generally can't remember what happened. So we watched the first season and we watched halfway to the second one. And it is so fucking good. Mm-hmm. It is just such a, it's such a brilliant watch. The action's brilliant. And it's like, I get sick of me because I'm always trying to find out who the voice actor is. I, don't know who I do that. <laughs> like on IMDb, yeah. it's like, who is it? I'm convinced everyone's David Tennant. So... <laughs> <laughs> you can realize like to how be fair, though, he, voice acts. <laughs> he's got about a million different voices as well though because when you hear yeah. his normal voices he's very scottish and then when he speaks like doctor who david Tennant, he's very not scottish but yeah yeah yeah, he, yeah. And he's and he was also in a soccer as well mm-hmm. so i'm like convinced he's he voice acts everyone now and um, so yeah we've just been watching invincible <laughs> have of you been watching anything interesting other than the topic at hand paint dry <laughs> oh yes, I'd have to see your posts about your paint, like because I've you, been painting. Kelly is full mil, mil, middle age now, so yeah. I don't know why I'm doing it before <laughs> Christmas. My tree isn't fucking up. I'm as about <gasps> as festive as a Veruca right now. Up. I'm like, are we I've calling you Veruca Kelly in, now? Like, Veruca Kelly, Veruca <laughs> Kelly. It, it's a case of like I've got two kids. One that's five. One that's nearly a year. And I'm sure the social services are going to come round and take them away because I have got my fucking tree up. <laughs> I've heard you that's what they do now. Again. Yeah, if you if you don't have it up by the first of November when you've got kids, they're like, what the fuck's going on? Well, to be honest, uh, Huxley was saying, why don't we have like Elf on the Shelf? And I was like, <gasps> um, we have dogs and they eat elves um, because they taste <laughs> like sugar. <laughs> No, yeah. that's, that's good. That'll that's, work. that's facts. Oh, yeah. But to be but fair, though, if Kelly wants to stand up and show what she's wearing, she's more she's oh lit God, up like yes. a Christmas tree. <laughs> Look at the dungarees, the dungarees of life, where she basically wow. is indestructible now. <laughs> um, I showed my son, uh-huh. showed my son, and he said, um, "Mummy, why are you covered in remote controls?" I mean, <laughs> that's a mobile phone. <laughs> You are such a 90s kid. It just makes my heart so big. (laughs) I love it. Amazing. But yeah, Natri. We've got Natri up. He's got an advent calendar, so we're not that cheap. Oh, we're that. Um, You've done one thing. Bless it. At least the abuse stops there, then it's fine. But but just in case case anyone from social services is watching this, Kelly loves her children. She looks after them really well. Please don't take I them do. away. I just fucking hate Christmas. I just hate <laughs> trees and shit and mm. just festivities. I just, I'm really excited for this Christmas because I can actually have a drink. Because last Christmas I was heavily pregnant That's with right. Sterling. Mm. So I'm going to be off my chops and I'm mm. going to enjoy every second of it. Well, we'll enjoy every second of it for you as well, Kelly, because I'm sure we'll get the messages and the videos of you dancing <laughs> yeah, as well. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, with, with a neck curtain and everything, but yeah. Uh, see, see, there's a throwback for any of the, any old what listeners, if you're listening now. <laughs> um, Sonia, have you been watching anything other than The Princess Bride? Yeah, I mean, I, I've only really watched it the once, but um, I uh, it's actually based on not... The last podcast, but the podcast before, mm-hmm. when me and Sammy were talking about Midnight Mass, it just really like oh. it really made us want to watch it again for the third time. So I was like, you know Amazing. what? So what I'm gonna do. So we watched Follow the House of Usher, and I was like, right, Midnight mm-hmm. Mass it is. Um, and we're we're 
I would say three quarters of the way through. Mm-hmm. Try to take it very slow because the the first two times I binged it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, I'm taking this slow and I'm going to digest every episode yeah. and really let the emotions take over my soul. So can I ask so... a question then? Because <laughs> like, you said you watched House of Usher, then Midnight Mass again. Yes. Which do you prefer? For me, right, as much as some of his other works are, like from, from a horror perspective, they're better. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think the writing in Midnight Mass is perfection. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have never felt so deeply before. Mm-hmm. It, so for me, that's the best show. Yeah. Like because it's so emotional, it's it's fantastic, and I love yeah. right. the concept of religion as horror. Like it, it's it's yeah. just such a good good. Goes, plot point. It just goes so hand in hand as well. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love. I love Midnight Mass, and I really did love House. I thought House of Usher was so fucking clever. Yeah. But the my favorite of all of his work is always going to be House on Haunted Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, a Haunting of Hill House. Haunted sorry. Hill. Yeah. 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 That, very, different. <laughs> very different. Very different. Same. Um, yeah. I I absolutely love that. Probably more to the aesthetics of it, the story of it. Yeah. But I oh, think yeah. Midnight yeah. Mass has the best writing. Mm. Yeah. Like the best. No, no I agree. I, I, yeah, I agree. I think the writing is better in Midnight Mass, but I do think House of Usher has the better ending. Oh, House of Usher. I, don't get me wrong when I say I, mm. I love Midnight Mass the most. I don't mean that the others aren't as good. Mm. I just mean mm-hmm. that it's yeah. It's like if they're top tier, then Midnight Mass is just a little bit above that. <laughs> yeah. No? Um, I... I thought House of Usher was mm. superb. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved it. And I love like, I love the speculation of like who the female character is. Like, is yeah. she death? Is she like a, an mm-hmm. ancient god? Is she... Mm-hmm spirit mm-hmm. like it's just fascinating no definitely and, and i think that will be a subject that we will come to round about Absolutely. halloween next year so uh, mike flanagan on mike, that show well mike flanagan <laughs> let's just do the flanagan verse i'll just yeah. do like say the fall of halloween do house in haunted hill blythe manor um haunted hill house sorry blythe manor and then midnight mass and then house of usher and what about uh, Oculus? Can do Oculus it. as well. <laughs> Can't miss Oculus out. Oculus because oh. the mirror from Oculus is in every single one of his works. Mm. Like yes. if you watch the shows back, it's in all of them. Mm. But yes. Also. So- I've changed the topic today. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> like Mike Flanagan. <laughs> oh, oh. First time we've had a takeover that wasn't uh, wasn't us. But yeah, <laughs> we're not yeah. talking about the Goonies either. But yeah, sorry. Uh, so Sammy, you want to do your disclaimer? Yes, and then we'll get on with it. So. <laughs> Everything discussed in today's episode is our opinions and our opinions alone. If you'd like to discuss anything from today's episode, please come and join us in the Facebook group, the comment section, or the Discord. I just had my brain went funny. (laughs) And we can have an open discussion. What we won't have is anyone coming for us and telling us our opinions are wrong. We can all agree to disagree in fandom. So let's keep it fun, keep it kind, (laughs) and keep the toxic behaviour out of nerdism. Well said. And just to say a few few things that we've hit as well this week. The Facebook page has hit 17,000 followers. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Seventeen thousand. Just take that. We are only, a, um, I think, a few hundred off ten thousand in the Facebook group. Uh, we are getting closer to four thousand fo- uh, followers on Instagram. Instagram's a little bit hard to get followers because you need tits and ass, and I haven't got them. Sorry. Um, and I am oh, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the nerdy up north uh, makes in. a calendar could come soon uh, Twitter is or X whatever it's called is creeping towards a thousand followers now uh, I don't know about the TikTok or whatever that 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 goes yeah because as as we found out last episode I am not a ticky tocky person so yes <laughs> it's got a hundred all right <laughs> it's got a hundred but it's got the views on every video is like over a mm. thousand so like, that's really good mm-hmm. and the views are great it's just the followers are just because i'm not really that interactive <laughs> so the only tiktok i know is the one out of freaking return to wars the good brass Excellent. guy you know what i mean i'm <laughs> yeah. just like tiktok what you talking about you need to wind them up to get them to go but yes uh funny enough we will be talking about return to Oz in a future episode coming soon but yes oh, so this week's say. episode is a very special movie a, 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 a cult movie from 1987 that mm. has a huge following, especially, I would say, in the last 10 years, that it has picked up a lot of steam and a lot of people do talk about it in very high regard. Um, I, I guess it's not for everyone's taste because the way it is filmed and the aesthetics and everything, 
it's very strange, shall we say, to be polite. <laughs> It, That's such a nice way of saying it. Because <laughs> it was an American budget movie that was shot in America, but it's yeah. shot like a British Monty Python movie in my... As Kelly pointed out in a text message, she sent, she went, is this a fucking Monty Python movie? And I said, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> but... Like the start, like the opening, like the start of the movie is brilliant because it it basically sets you on a path that you not like you don't expect. Basically, you've got Fred Savage from the Wonder Years, and yes. and Columbo with who are not credi- Columbo. I was fucking buzzing when I saw him. I was like, oh my god, he's a granddad. <laughs> yep, but they're not credited with names or anything. It's just grandson and grands and granddad in the film as well. So you're like, oh great, we're going to have some kind of like big budget American blockbuster, all them different things. And then it kind of goes in the realms of Red Dwarf budget, shall we say? <laughs> That's such a great I'll way of it. Yeah. The, the, the I like that. that. I like that. <laughs> so, I, I did not expect this tonight. I really thought this was one of Kelly's favourite films. <laughs> Should I should I just like set the scene right? Mm-hmm. These, this is one of the films that I really should have fucking seen, mm-hmm. but it's it, it's a film that is somehow evaded me. I don't know yeah. if it was hiding mm-hmm. under the stairs, like I'm hiding under the stairs right now. I don't mm-hmm. know if it was just in a box that was mm-hmm. sealed and placed in cement mm-hmm. and then put in the garden, like a, like a time you know? capsule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and don't get us wrong, like I, I know it existed. I'm not mm-hmm. like. Oh, Princess Bride, what is this? But it, it, I recognise, you know, like the um, the meme of, you know, I am a tire, you <laughs> killed my, my father. father. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Day, and day. I was just like, ah, like, oh, that's Princess Bride. Yeah. But yeah. never watched it. So I feel quite, well, I thought I felt quite privileged to have been able to watch it in my old age, 36 years after it was released. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, maybe not. So you weren't feeling the Princess Bride, shall we say, Kelly? Do you know what? I don't know what I'm feeling. Right, okay. I'm still, I'm, I'm still, like... still processing like the aspects and the tones and and themes of the movie. I don't know what the fuck I watched, but I watched something, and that's what we're going to discuss. Hopefully, yes. so. But hopefully the, by the end of it you'll figure it out, Kelly. <laughs> the way I would probably describe it, because if you if you think of it like as it is in the box, the movie itself doesn't make any sense. It's it's like say it, it, but if you think about the way it starts, it's a grandfather that is trying to get his son, his grandson, sorry, into the world of fantasy, imagination, and all books. Of, and books, and just get lost in the mm. imagination. So and and if you remember as well, if you if it's your grand if it's your grandfather telling us, it's he's not going to tell you a story like let's let's say the never ending story. Oh, like I say, he's not going to go that dark. So it is going to be light and fluffy, which this movie is certainly is. It is about like good versus evil. The hero gets the girl, and not all the bad guys are real bad guys. That's probably the yeah. best description I can give. But yeah, if you watch it from like if you cut out the first ten minutes where you get the introduction, it's a very confusing mess. It's very much just like a Monty Python sketch <laughs> where they just like the actors and the actresses are just doing what they want and having as much fun as possible without going like with rude jokes and and oh, I, I honestly think Rob Reiner actually mm. got really pissed at a party with all these fucking famous people and said ah they are fancy think, doing this film right I feel like and then he came out with it. it's meant to be a satire of fairy tales and mm. I feel like that's missed I think people take it too seriously yeah. and think that as a fantasy tale, it's not good, mm-hmm. but it's meant to be taken the same way you would take this as Spinal Tap. Like, it's meant yes. to be a mockery of well, it fairy does, it does tales. Have, it and I think it does that really guessing. well. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, exactly. And it <laughs> also <laughs> referenced Spinal Tap as well um, when he does the whole torture scene and he's like, I'll knock it down to the lowest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he does actually reference Spinal Tap, but I am like totally the same as Kelly. Like, I only watched this on Tuesday and I did mention I watched it twice. I can't believe you've mm-hmm. never, That's... like, it's, it's like Kelly's at like 36 years old and it's like yeah, it's like yeah, yeah it's, it's mad yeah. but I know like a lot of my friends are like this is like one of their favorite films mm. of like all time and I'm like so I, I know all the references um mm. but yeah I watched it twice mm. 
because I fell asleep towards the end <laughs> of the first watching. That um, board's fucking well. <laughs> but instead of instead of trying to find where I was, I was like, I'll just put on a game. Um, so I put it on again, and what I realized, I really didn't fall asleep. Like when the end happened, I was like, oh, mm. I didn't actually fall asleep and miss anything, so it's all right. <laughs> um. But it yeah, kind of ends, I, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I got all the re- like all when all the references came up, mm-hmm. I like I totally got it. But I think this is something that I should have. It's like Gremlins. Yeah, I'll never get your love for Gremlins because mm-hmm. oh, I didn't watch it as a Gremlins. kid. <laughs> I only watched it a few years ago, um. So I don't get that kind of mm-hmm. love for it. I think this is exactly the same. If I watched it back then, mm-hmm. I probably would feel a lot different. But I gotta say, it does have some really fucking funny bits in. Oh yes. Spe- Look at really the cast though. Like, like if you think of yeah, the cast, cast like yeah. Carrie yeah. Elves, like Robin Wright, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal is unrecognizable. Billy Crystal. As as I didn't know. Harold I didn't even King. know. I was like, I recognize his voice. <laughs> the voice. But I his know. face. The voice. But his voice. His <laughs> face. <laughs> and like his wife, um, Carol, Carol King. Carol King. Carol King. Carol King. I was like, yeah. it's all the way through the film. It was a case of me pointing at the screen, going, "Eh, that's thingy. Eh, mm-hmm. e, the, e, that's the teacher out the clueless. Eh, that's the it bloke was. out of saw. <laughs> e, that you know what? Was... <laughs> the bloke out of saw. Oh yeah. <laughs> also, He's got um, both Mel... his legs. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> But Mel, um, Mel Smith is it yeah, Mel Smith? Mel Smith's in it. Yeah, that's that's Mel, why yeah, that's why yeah. when I Chris... like when it cut to them parts, like with Peter Cook and Mel Smith Smith being in it, I was like, mm. this has got to be a British movie, but it wasn't. That's what completely threw us. Yeah. But as you said, like uh, Andre the Giant, who was absolutely fantastic yeah. in this movie. Yeah. Um, yes, I forget Andre the Giant is really <laughs> fucking random. Mandy, uh, Mandy, P- I'll try and say Patekin, uh, the guy from I can't home, see his name Homeland, was, yeah. from Homeland, which it He's just, just criminal minds. Um, and get the the person that you'd recognise in every film, but you can never name him, Wallace Shawn. Uh, the, the yes, guy's, he's, yeah. He's the, he's the guy that played like like. That Wesley outwits clueless. and and stuff. Yeah, clueless. Yes. Yeah, clueless. clueless. Teach yeah. about the clueless. Fucking yes, Rex out of Toy Story. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was yes. like, that's fucking Rex. <laughs> what's the What's the guy called who played the evil prince? Uh, Chris Saradon. Saradon. Yes. Uh, I saw Sar- him Saradon. the other week. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he was it he was it for the love of horror. Mm-hmm. Um, because no I didn't, yeah, I wasn't until I was looking through the cast list and I was like. What that that's a guy from Fright Night. Fright Night, Night. yeah. That is also fucking Jack Skeleton. Mm-hmm. Oh really? Yeah, yes. of course. <laughs> e- I was like, what the fuck? And he was actually of a horror. Mm-hmm. I even could picture where his table was because he was on a break. <laughs> but if you look at Andy the... wore a mask the whole time as well. Yeah, I did. A lot of people were upset about that. They, they actually yeah. refunded. Um... The, the photos, uh, the Love and Horror Shit announced. They said, anyone who got the photographs taken with him, we weren't told beforehand that he that he was going to be insist on wearing a mask. So right. if anyone wants a refund, we will happily refund oh, the good. money. That's so, good on them. Yeah. That's really good for them. good on them because like that's not a photo. No, <laughs> that could be anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I like, know... Are you talking like just a mask or like a like a full face mask, like a balaclava? Like a, it was just like not a, it was a, like a COVID mask type thing. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. But still, if you're paying for like a photo opportunity with someone and like say to get like your picture framed and stuff, you don't really want to say, "Oh, look." I'd be fucked off. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, like, could have been anyone your really. Face out, yeah. you twat. Could have been me. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was it? <you? laughs> it was Sammy. Sammy. Sammy had a secret side gig that day. But yeah, because um, I know I spoke to someone. She was a bit upset about it. Said. Like she would like that was one of the nice. guests that she really wanted to see, but like say, for, like for the event and everything, I know we're going back next year. Like they ran that show, like yeah. probably the second best um convention I would say is run. Like SunnyCon is always the top tier. Like I've never seen anything run as well as SunnyCon in my yeah. life. Like convention size because we've been Not to some hits. No. Well, unless when you, machine. when unless you're goodwill and you're trying to put tear people's eyes out, but that that's another. Well, story. yeah, there's that, <laughs> but we we didn't have nothing to do with that. Yeah, what you like <laughs> your eyes? I'm gonna take them out. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we're going back next year, so that'd be all fun. But yes, he's Jack Skeleton as well, which like blew me fucking mind, mm-hmm. and I couldn't hear it though. <laughs> yes, I couldn't hear no. Jack Skeleton in his voice. But as you said, it, the cast is iconic. It's got like. The who's who of like eighties talent from nine uh, yeah. from America and British uh, yeah, comedy yeah. as well. Mel Smith 
like say that the jokes were like were subtle and well done. And I say subtle. The first bit when he talks with that really weird voice and he coughs and he does that. That, that fucking cracked me up. That yeah. e, Jesus <laughs> wept. I was like, e God, you albino crazy person, and he's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it had very tints of very eighties British comedy in there as well. And I think that's yeah. probably why. Um, not saying the British uh, Princess Bride isn't big in America, but I think it was bigger in the UK than it was in America when it mm. initially was released as well, type thing. But let's come back to the story then. So that the initial story, the plot is like after the go on, explain it. So I'll try and I'll try and get the explanation. Now. I'll do better than I did on the crow. I'm not COVID this time. So basically, like as I said at the start, we've got a nice like this this grandson's not very well, so the grandfather's coming over to make him feel better to tell him a nice story. And the story he's going to tell him is the princess bride. Grandsons all get I'm gonna stop you here for a second. I need mm-hmm. to stop you here for a second. Just one second, one second. <sighs> Red man. Didn't it kick off at your granddad? Your granddad's Columbo. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Appreciate that your dad, like your granddad, is telling you this fucking story when you're ill. Mm-hmm. Don't be a douche. And he could be and solving just, murder, murders. He could be fixing you know all these I mean? crimes. He took time out of his busy fucking, you know, repertoire. And <laughs> just, just, again, if my granddad was Columbo, I'd be fucking buzzing. Yeah. But he didn't have a cigar, uh, though. I was That was my only complaint. He's he needed one. He, he had a book. He had a book. <laughs> the book. The cigar was, was under the book. <laughs> right. It's behind his ear. Yeah, yeah, I'm so trying to keep it together. That's so fucking funny. I'm sorry, but it, that, that was the first thing that annoyed us. I was watching it. I had my headphones in, watching hmm. it. Adam was playing Luigi's Mansion because he was like, "I'm not watching it. I've watched it before." And I was just like, "Right, I need to make fucking notes. Mm-hmm. I want, I want to focus." And then I was just the first thing. I was just like, "Dude, <laughs> do do have respect. It's mm-hmm. Colombo. Do you know what I mean? Just." Knock it on the head, mm-hmm. reel it in, reel it in. I would have killed him, <laughs> killed him. But anyway, so that, yes. that, that, that just, I, I had to stop you there. I had to acknowledge That's the fine. fact that Fred Savage is a twat. Right. But to be fair, he's meant to be a twat in real life as well. But allegedly, yeah. allegedly, yeah. allegedly, yeah. allegedly. allegedly. Uh... <laughs> but yes. Um, right, so... continue, continue. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thrown now. I'm just, I've got the song for the wonder, wonder years I made. What would you do <laughs> if I sang <laughs> out of tune? <laughs> Just here and with it. Sorry. Adam woke Adam. <laughs> but yes. I've uh, seen him live, by the way. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> um, yes. Sorry. <laughs> that just went so he tells his story. Tells yeah, his story. So, yeah. so we're going to the story. <laughs> it's all about, um, like, as he tells him, it's about uh, uh, fencing, sword fights, pirates, giants. So it's he's getting the excitement up for the kid. And because what kids don't make stories about that. And he's because he doesn't want a lovey dovey story. That's the one thing he doesn't oh, want. Yeah, he doesn't want a love story. No. So, it, so it starts out really nicely. Um, like I say, the, the the beautiful princess falls in love with the stable boy, even though they try and pretend that they don't love each other, and it's really awkward and very much like a relationship would be in them days, where he's like, "I'm going to ignore you. That means I love you." Um, little Wesley. Um, being nothing, and it's and I love that bit because it's breaking the class system. It's like saying, "Oh, get there's a stable boy and the princess. They can't be together. They mustn't be together." It was like, "No, no, they can be together because of love." So, love. Uh... Buttercup was a fucking bitch, <laughs> and he was just as you wish, as you wish. And do you know what? Mm-hmm. He, Curry, he, he was a sexy bastard. Oh, he was. Yeah, he yeah. yeah. still oh, is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was sitting there, God, what? Wad, but like you don't see the eyes. It's looked, his eyes. Beautiful, oh, beautiful. But not just the way she was going on, like eh, meh, 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 meh. and he was just like, "Hey, God, I get lover." And I was just like, "Buttercup, man, you're a fucking weed. Shut up. You don't deserve him. It's beautiful." So, so you, I was very bitter. So you, were, so maybe this might have like clouded your judgment towards the movie because you wanted uh, Wesley for yourself. <laughs> No, you're, you're all right. <laughs> you're all right. You're all right. <laughs> I, I, I can lost. Yeah, I can okay. lost. No, it just it was just like oh god, mm. I just want to knock her out. Um, but yeah, yeah. And so, then the end, buttercup. Buttercup. You know, Bill, I'm not going to start singing again. But yeah. No. Um. So yes. So that 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 cemented the like say the the love that they have together. Then he goes off and is pronounced dead. He's disappeared <gasps> for years. Oh, and then fuck. yes. And then um, the Prince Humperdick, what a name, 
What a name, can't say. Humperdinck. I kept thinking of Engelbert Humperdinck. Humperdinck. I, I, I kept on getting Farquhar uh, vibes from Shrek. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, Tiny man syndrome. Yes. Just waiting for the <laughs> man scene to come up. So basically, with it being the olden days and men ruling over women, they can choose the brides and the women don't get a say. All that feminine shit was thrown out the window, apparently, in this movie. Um, so yes, yes, problematic in a little way, but yes, like I say, we'll, we'll come back it's to still it. Fant- it's just fantasy. <laughs> it's a fantasy story. <laughs> it's not that deep. <laughs> we can make it as deep as we want. We can go deep. No, oh, no. deep as a puddle. <laughs> yes. So yes, and then the princess gets kidnapped by three strange humans, shall we say, and then we are introduced. Fucking hilarious. Yes. Who don't look like they deserve to be together. Like, yeah, they really no. don't. They're like so mismatchy, like Obviously, Andre the Giant's one of them. He's just he, he cannot act for fucking shit. Well, so that funny. is just mint. Can I we love just the scene where he's like where he's fighting with Carrie and like because Carrie's a tall dude and you yeah. just see like the height difference. It's, it's ridiculous. Just, like, so funny. So, I read a few little facts about Andre the Giant in this movie because mm. I was really interested as to why him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rob Reiner fucking loves him. Yeah, and it was a, a no brainer. He was going to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. But he has the movement. They just could never understand what he was saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you notice, <laughs> Rob Reiner had him read every single word from a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. So he could then mush it together. Mm-hmm. Ah. Or hear a sentence so you can actually understand what he's saying. So that all makes Andre sense. the Giant is doing is just... Lip, like, lip it kind of looks like lip lip syncing, it. Lip syncing to his words. Uh huh. But he, it is him talking. It's That's just fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting. Yeah, they had to they broke it down into like so. I is he she, and then they just kind of mushed it together just ever so slightly so they could make like a coherent sentence to where everyone could understand it because he was not not going to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. were, they were yeah. either going to have a mute. Yeah. Or. They were going to do it. They were going to try this method. Um, he also, Robert Wright, Robin Wright used to get very cold because obviously it's a lot of outdoor shots being done. Mm-hmm. And it, to get warm, he just used to put his hand on top of our head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if his hand that was one. that big, it just kept her head nice like and hat. warm. Yes. Uh-huh, which then kept her nice and warm. He was and a human he was, radiator. They said he was the nicest what? person to ever work with. The oh. man could put away his alcohol. Oh, like they all went on. out for meals and he was just like, he was six bottles in as they were finishing a glass. Yeah. Like he, they just said he was a lovely. Funny. No, the, like, the, did you see the fact about the, um? Did, did you hear about the fart or did you read about the fart? No, no. <laughs> that didn't come up. That's the best fact about. That's the best bit of trivia. So on the set of the Princess Bride, one day while they were filming, he let out a sixteen-second fart. Fuck the fuck. Up. And it brought the entire production to a complete standstill. And then mm. Rob Reiner was like, "Are you okay, Andrew? Andre?" And mm. his response was, "I am now, boss." <laughs> <laughs> Chernobyl comes out of his ass. No. You know what? The, the nicest thing about reading stuff on this movie was, and it's really there's not a lot to read about it for one reason. Everyone got on. Yeah, there was yeah. no there was yeah. no drama. All loved each there was other. no lush. yeah there was no lush. drama on this movie. Everyone got on with each other. There's no backstabbing. There's no mm-hmm. you do know what I mean. It was one movie that like they've just fucking loved doing. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. definitely. I know, I know, like, like, spend a little bit of time talking about Andre the Giant in the movie and, like, outside of the movie <laughs> as well, because everyone knows, like, say, we're big wrestling fans as well. He was massive in the wrestling world, like, not just because of his size, just because what he could do and what he did mm-hmm. for the business as well. But I love the stories you hear about him. Like, like if you pissed him off. It was a very different story. Like the Ultimate I Warrior, he, um, when yeah. he was in WWE, he re- he worked a few what they call house so- shows where it's not live TV, where they're like kind of practicing for the main of like events, so they get like the matches down and they get their timing right. And each time the Ultimate Warrior would just basically uh like hit Andre the Giant full force with a clothesline, and Andre would say, "You got to slow down. You're hitting this too hard. I'm not going to be able to keep working if you're hitting us this hard." And he would go, oh, yeah, yeah. Next night, he would do the exact same thing. So the point was, went, right, 
that's going to stop now. So he puts everything, he, like everything you can think of, disgusting wise, in his armpit. Because his armpit could engulf a human head, so he got <laughs> so so basically he got the ultimate warrior. So the, he got the ultimate warrior in a headlock, and he put his head in the armpit for I think it was only for like 10, 15 seconds, but almost suffocated him till he was dead. Uh, because it basically just enclosed his head in this stench that was his thing, and and he, and he pulled him to a side and said, "If if you keep hitting us, I'm gonna." do this every night, but I'm going to keep you there longer. So the Ultimate Warrior learned his lesson and didn't hit him uh, after what that. What did he put in his armpit to oh, make it stinky? Like, um, who? It, oh, like, if, well, like if, if, it, if it, were, if it was wrestlers, rats. they would have used feces. There would have been feces oh, and stuff shit. like that. Uh, <laughs> the wrestlers at the time, like, let's be honest, they were classed as carny folk. So yeah, um, yeah, they weren't scared really of... Disgusting. Yeah, so they would... like. <laughs> I think there's a big rib where Owen Hart shit in one of the person's shoes. Like, um, oh, so, I've heard that. Yeah. So actually, in the in the dressing room, shat in someone's shoe. So when they put your shoe on, it, they just all pissing themselves, laughing because there's a like poo in the shoe. That's fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever do. seen Sonya break like this. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh, and, and we did an always sunny episode. <laughs> but like, when you talk about his drinking habits, he was always renowned for drinking because like. Um, like well, like I say, we know some big drinkers, but his glass of wine was a bottle of wine. Yeah. So, Aye. so he would go through like a crate of wine, yeah. and he would have drinking contests for other people as well, and like like actors as well. Like I think on Conan yeah. the Barbarian, Barbarian, he had a a drinking contest with all like the the big tough guys and stuff, and within like a couple of hours, all of them were like collapsed, passed out, and he was just sitting there sitting on his uh bottle of wine just laughing his head off because he like he was always jolly he just like he was like and that sounds really cheesy but he was always like jolly giant he was like but he always used to call people (laughs) boss that was always his thing he used to go okay boss Uh, that was always his Mm -hmm. oh sorry no no i'm saying saying he was just a very gentle and nice guy when it comes to it but yeah um, yeah, I... that's what the, that's that's what was just echoed throughout, like especially from like Rob Reiner, mm-hmm. and he said like this man's not stupid either. No. Like he is so fucking intelligent. Mm-hmm. It's just on from camera to mic to studio, you know, editing wise, you mm-hmm. just couldn't make out what he was saying. <laughs> that was the only thing. Like they said, he could move. He he took good direction. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't have to repeat themselves twice. They just couldn't fucking understand him. Well, it's it's hard though because once he's got a giant, and like you say, with the giant, the, like the condition he had, his gums and his teeth were like like yeah. filled his mouth, and he was mm-hmm. fucking French. So <laughs> as well, <laughs> a, a, like so, he's either French or French Canadian. I could never get like like went, but I remember he used to always have like a bit of a French accent as well. So that's why he used to never do promos in WWE or WWF in the t- in the days because he used to always have trouble, like not because he knew what to say, but he couldn't get the words out type thing. But he could tell he was having so much fun on the set as well. And uh, as Sonia said, when you car- when Carrie Ellis is standing next to him, he. He looks like tiny. I know there's a very famous photo on the set of Conan the Barbarian where it's got uh, Andre the Giant and I think another basketball player. I think it's Adriel Jabbar type thing standing next to Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger looks like the Danny DeVito in (laughs) in the picture. Um, Like in twins. Yeah, twins. So you've got like both. I fucking love twins. Yeah. So it's 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 if you if you look it up, I'll try and find that photo and put it on the uh, the Facebook group. But it's it's always funny because Arnie just looks tiny compared to these men, and um and even like he's acting in this because it it is a very cheesy tongue in the like tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek. Take, yeah. um not to be taken too seriously, but like his little fight scene where he's throwing rocks at uh, uh what we don't know is Wesley at the time. It, it was the was it the pirate? Uh, oh, what was he called now? Uh, the dreaded pirate, uh, Roberts, Roberts, or, Roberts, and uh, Roberts. Ro- the, the, the pirate, dread pirate, the dread pirate, Roberts. Yes, and um, like I loved all the interactions with them. Like the first one you get is with um, like say Ig- when we find the, the, the like my favorite car- character in the whole thing, Igni- Igni- I can't even say it now. Montoya. <laughs> uh, Ig- my name is Igni- 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 Montoya. You c- kill, you kill my you father, kill my father. Pre- prepare to die. Like. 
that interaction in that fight scene, even though it's hilarious for the wrong reasons, because when they're doing the somersaults and like flying, you can actually see the crash mats that they're hitting as well. <laughs> oh my and, god! And and there's things flying up, and you think, oh shit, they could have took that on post, but it it adds to the like how bad this movie is. And um, elements when they climb up the mountain face. I know I'm jumping all over, but just things I love about the movie is when like all of them are on Andre the Giant's back. And he's going up the rope, and it's just like, hey, this is nothing. It's like, fuck off, you could not even do that in your best year. <laughs> and it's like, I'm just going up this little mountain. And it's like, it's absolutely hilarious. I have actually the... literally got in my notes, how canny is Andre the Giant? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's such a sweet he's heart, isn't he? He's just so canny. The, the bit where he goes, like, uh, the, the doggy paddle, he goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? And at the, the end with the horses, he's like, I got four horses because I knew you were coming and you were bringing the lady. And then he goes, Hi, lady. <laughs> oh, when he catches her when she jumps out the window as well, and he's like smiling, he's like, Hey. <laughs> <laughs> my, <it's> just <laughs> my the funniest bit for me and i mean like literally had me crossing my legs because i needed to go to the toilet laughing was <laughs> when the the interaction between buttercup and uh, wesley when he's a pirate on top of the hill yeah and yeah. she pushes him down the hill <laughs> And she then fucking follows him afterwards. Oh, she and but by the time she gets to the bottom of the hill, she then knows it's Wesley. <laughs> no, she knew what the, she, she knew when he said as you wish, and that's why she jumps down. Oh, I uh, really she follows him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, if I heard that, it wouldn't have been as funny. Yeah, but it was just I was like, how the fuck is she from going from there to there? <laughs> found out that that's it. Tell you what, they take some fucking tumbles as well, though. That 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 no, one. Yeah. <laughs> They should have had broken limbs, fucking broken Fuck necks yes, and spines and, and shit. She's fucking just rolling down now. It's just like, how big is this fucking it's the, here? It's the noises the makers are going to. Oh, yeah. yeah. And oh. it's like clearly like recorded after the fact as well because it's so crisp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that tickled. You that, know? Did, that didn't <laughs> feel very nice, but yes. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh, God. But like all the different interactions like in the movie is just so funny. Like, like uh, Wallace Shawn is like so skeezy and um, not I wouldn't call it sinister, but you, it's got that the hateability factor, not the likability factor, but the hateability factor that you think, oh, I'm glad he didn't like he he got out out outdone by Wesley and his and his tricks and stuff. <laughs> I, I love that scene so much. <laughs> the like, fucking wine. <laughs> when you just like think it's a game of wit and it's just like the the nonchalance and he's just getting no. Actually, I've spent the last five years developing an intolerance to this poison. <laughs> 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 like, I, I, I watched that clip earlier when I said the cocky. I was like, "Why did he do that in case he was ever in this position? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like why else would you do that?" And it's like, like thinking about all the different possibilities. It's like, well, I might be in a situation once where I need to drink some yeah. wine against a really clever person, and uh, it, it'll work as a trick to get my true love back. Yes, that, yeah. that's the reason I'll do this. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen one day. I'm going to prepare. Um, <laughs> Kari Kari did actually surprise Rob Reiner. Um, the scene with the quicksand let's talk about oh, the quicksand yeah. as well Let... the quicksand yeah so when she falls into the quicksand mm -hmm. cariel starts looking around mm -hmm. to find something to to jump down with mm -hmm. rob reiner had no fucking idea that that's what he was going to do right it wasn't in the script <laughs> oh. he just did it <laughs> so how was he meant to get her out fuck knows all right <laughs> I think she was going to just stay there. Just left her. <laughs> yeah, it was, oh, yeah. yeah, it was it was the jump. The jump was um very much improvised because Rob <laughs> Reiner just kept the camera rolling, not knowing what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> that, like, say, let's no talk about the quick sign as well, because there's two movies and the eighties movies as well that give me fear for quicksand. So there was this one, and the Never Ending Story. Yeah, oh, Never Ending <laughs> Story was the the. The fucking cherry on top, man. Like I'm oh, still learning. Never story it. can get in the fucking bin. I'm still um, learning. <laughs> get in the sea. But, get in the fucking like, sea. After watching these movies as well, did anyone else have a fear of quicksand? Think there was going to be a bigger problem in their life as well <laughs> yeah. that we were going to have to hide from. I really spent my entire life preparing. Oh, this yeah. never happened. See, like, I was too busy preparing for two fucking statues going to fucking shoot rays <laughs> of fucking light. That is right. You know, what I mean, that was what I was preparing for. Yeah. Quicksand was just dropping no. the fucking ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Quicksand. So, if any of you has watched um, the pro oh, what's it called, the Criminal Program, um, mysterious something, mysterious criminal, mysterious. It was on Netflix. Redid it, revamped it recently. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Unsolved Mysteries. Yes, uh huh. Yeah. So Unsolved Mysteries, when it first came out, me and I mean me and Anth watched it a couple of years ago, but the first it's like the 80s versions. The biggest fear in the 80s for people was amnesia and quicksand. <laughs> What? <laughs> amnesia? Yeah, there was a lot of people who got amnesia in the 80s and 90s. They were like, yeah, so they can't remember a thing. <laughs> but yeah, quicksand was one of them. Mm. In hell. So that was Definitely the 80s and there. 90s for you, quicksand. Yes. So, but um, I, like, to, I know we just mentioned that like this, the sword fights and stuff with between uh, Montoya and uh, the, pi- the dreaded pirate Robinson at the time. Um, how good was that fight scene, though? Like, oh I, yeah, fucking mint. Mm. Yeah, so good. Almost, yeah. almost like it was done by professionals. <laughs> what are you talking because, about? No, I'm being deadly serious. They got professional training. Rob <laughs> Reiner wanted it completely, one hundred percent authentic to Errol <laughs> Flynn mm-hmm. and how yes. he sword fights. Yes, and so they they had a professional come in to teach them. Otherwise, it was literally going to be them two just fighting sticks at each other <laughs> yeah but i love the smack talk as well because they were being so respectful to each other yes. and it was yeah, kind of like saying so I, I, I it's, it's like you're really good but the, but what you did not know i am not left-handed on top of your lips and so it's like it's like, like one up in each other it's like that this is as this is where I think Kelly got the Monty Python part of it because that was so Monty Python and so I could see John Cleese and like like the Monty Python sketch doing something they would have like fucking funny one. Yeah. Eric, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> like with the, with I feel the, like the main Monty Python from the 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 part that I genuinely think one hundred percent has to be inspired by Life of Brian is the the priest and the Mowage. Yes. Right? Mowage. Like, you can't tell me that's not ripped directly from the Life of Brian. Yeah. I honestly felt I was just like right. Have they just kind of spliced something <laughs> from Monty Python into this film because they didn't have just, the it's scene clear or something? Inspiration. It's, like, it's, it's got to be. inspiration. Yeah, I've got a feeling like Mel that. Smith had a lot to do with the back, like like this lot of the stuff that went on. Like it, I know he's not credited. I know he's just that because uh, originally when I first like when I first doing research, I thought Mel Smith might have been something to do with the writing side because yeah. a lot of the jokes and uh, humor is very Smith like. Uh, Mel, it's like, very English. Very English, and like the yeah, stuff yeah. that he's done. I know he's directed a few big Hollywood movies and stuff as well, and he was involved in the Bean movie and stuff like that. I know, not not classed as uh, technically American, but it was like an American budget. But yeah, like a lot of the humor, and I, as you said, with um when they're doing the torturing on Wesley, and like how ridiculous like that that whole thing is. This machine will suck out a year of your life. If I do five, we don't know what will happen to you. Oh, um, it's like that by, uh, absolutely ridiculousness. Yeah, or by Christopher Guest as well, which yes. is just fucking Jamie Lee's husband. <laughs> I know. I was like, what the flip? He, he was the one with the extra finger, wasn't he? Yes, the six fingers. Yeah. Yes, it's the extra yeah, six finger. Fingers. Yes, yes, six finger, his six finger guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. killed my father. <laughs> well, Stop about... saying that. <laughs> So everybody's something... like, stop saying that. <laughs> There's something about him, um, Manny. Is it Manny Pack? Oh, no. Mandy. What? Mandy. There's Mandy something Patinkin. about Patinkin, yeah. There's something about him I always just found like he was fucking adorable in this movie. Like I, absolutely I love adorable. Him. I have to, I think he, I feel like if you strip the story back and you ignore the love, mm-hmm. he's actually the main character. He has the mm-hmm. most like honorable mm-hmm. quest. Mm-hmm. Like part of his when I watched it wanted to watch more of him like i was yeah. a bit like fuck wesley and buttercup i want to know about this revenge story like yeah. because he because he genuinely had a purpose there was a, yeah. there was a purpose for his actual like the story of him mm-hmm. as opposed to just romance and flittering and oh who gives a shit um, and yeah, but the... he was like he was on a revenge quest and mm-hmm. when that quest was over he was like well, what yeah, he's like i don't know what to do with my life yeah yeah <laughs> But I... yeah, his storyline killed me. Like mm-hmm. when he was having that, it was it was almost like, right, I've got you up from the mountain. I'm going to kill you now. It's just like, let's get the fucking kettle on, have a cup of tea, yeah, have a I'll bit tell of you chat. About my you know, dad. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you about. And but when he showed like the scars on his yeah. cheek, and I was just mm-hmm. like, oh, and he's like, when did that happen? Oh, I was eleven. I was just like, oh god. <laughs> then he showed him the sword, and it was a beautiful sword, and I was just like, ah. Oh. 
But as, uh, but even as a kid, no, I knew at like, that point. Because he's like, have you got six fingers? <laughs> yeah. He's just like. Just randomly going, no. So, and, and, to be honest, and, and, he, and, he, and he looked younger than actually him. So like that, that was yeah. the thing. Even with a mask on, you can tell that yeah. he's not going to be an older dude. But, um, oh, I loved it. Like, you, you knew at that point, even like the fight, they weren't going to like be enemies type thing because like the yeah. interaction and stuff and uh even though he was best that he like went on his knees and went make it quick and he just go- hits him and says i cannot kill an artist like you and stuff like that was such a, a sweet little way and even the way he handled like andre the giant in that battle yeah. where he just yeah. put him in a sleeper hold and like, like and that that kind of nice it's like i know it's gonna sound cheesy as out but this film is very nice that's yeah, it nice. Is. I, I've noticed as well. Like when I was, I was watching clips back, like over this past week, just to refresh my memory on it, and it, uh, the bits with Andre and the bits with the Negro, but then obviously he kills um mm-hmm. the the count. So I was like, hang on, mm-hmm. he, it genuinely feels like he only kills the people who deserve it, and you mm-hmm. as a viewer get to choose who you feel deserves it too, because yeah. Yeah. the ones he lets live are the one you, ones you love. Yeah, like yeah. and like that's that's so good because like mm-hmm. in a. Let, let's say it was Game of Thrones. <laughs> Everyone would be dead. And Eagle would, they'd be dead. They'd be dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dead. They'd all be dead. Mm-hmm. Um, you wouldn't be watching anything, just no, a blank no. screen. <laughs> like, and to be honest, Hunter Dink probably would have won. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we would have had the better part. So, so, like, you get to choose who the good guys are, and we all know it's Inigo and, mm-hmm. and Andre from the beginning because they're kind of, they don't even really like like following yeah. is it, mm. I can't say his name is it Vizini Vizini just call him yeah. Vin- 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 guy Vindo that would be yeah. it. Yeah. V. big V um, big, like big. when they have the fight like an ego says like he, he puts food on my table like he pays the bills basically mm. it's a job like I don't yeah. I don't owe you any like ill will yeah. like no definitely like, um but it's funny, you know, if you mention like Game of Thrones, if they like say if they did a Game of Thrones version of the Princess Bride, probably uh, Count R- Rugen, uh, Christopher Guest character would probably try and take over Prince Humperdinck and overthrow the throne, and like you'd have all these backstories and people trying it to. It would be a red wedding. Fred, <laughs> Fred Savage's yeah. grandson would have been strangling the, the would have been strangling the grandfather and stuff. Uh, at the and end. that would be too much for my brain. <laughs> this I would dare say this film was like a Mars bar for the brain. It was sweet. It it was sugary. It was easy to follow. It mm. was just, as you said earlier, nice. Sammy is gone. Sammy <laughs> is gone. Sonia. She is it gone. Was, it was uh, the red wedding. And just imagine like Walter Frey just Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Brings us to the, the land of the sun. There we go. <laughs> no, you know what? I was watching a clip earlier and I watched a clip with um Inigo Montoya and Coxie like looked at us and he was like, do you know what I've just realized? I was like, what? And he was like, it, they, they totally like ripped Ober, Oberon Martel off Inigo Montoya. <laughs> yes, they, they did, yeah. They did. And he was like, he even says, You killed my sister. Like, yeah, yeah. You're, like <laughs> you're like, prepare to die. George <laughs> oh, Martin, da- be damned. He is basically using, he's basically he done it a more violent. Confirmed. He's done a more violent version of The Princess Bride. And yeah, <laughs> never that. even put like two and two together. I, know, so I was like, My did. mind. See, that's amazing. We need to send the uh, like say the Game of Thrones a historian that just to say, look, yeah. this is the point of view look you need me. to look at. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting uh, this, but uh, like I say, uh, Montoya's and Count Rugen's first like interaction when they see each other, uh, that bit is amazingly well done as well. Yeah. Where you think there's going to be like that big fight, and all he does is like turns around and runs away because he's a bad <laughs> guy, so he is a coward. <laughs> And it's like, and you, and you see the frustration, and when he look gets locked at the door, and he's screaming at like uh, Andre the Giant's character, in. um, saying help me, <laughs> like say, and he, he's helping Wesley, saying oh, like say, like Fezix is like I'm helping Wesley, and he's like no, no, this is my only chance to get revenge from my father, and that's why you like saying yeah, take away the side quest, and um, make it the main quest now, and again that fight is probably the most emotional. Heart in this movie, and and I know when it's like a love story, and you you're supposed to be like rooting for the couple and stuff, but that's mm. kind of on the wayside now. Now, as you said, the main focus is we want him to get the revenge for what happened to his father and what happened to him as a child, and it's kind of like the cheering moment because with them being the main bad guy, he, he's sneaky, so he throws a knife and he get, catches you out, and you kind of like... Honestly, thought he died. I was fucking devastated. I was with me pen, 
<laughs> with me book, I was yeah. like, what the fuck? No, no. He's been through alcoholism. He's had a troubled life. He wants to avenge his father. And this six-fingered twat throws a fucking dagger. Yeah. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. But again, <laughs> if, they, if, they, if they left it at that, I know yeah. we wouldn't have got closure, but I wouldn't have been sad because I would have think, yes, that's quite a... A poignant way to kill off a character like that, and it would. I think I would have turned it off. Right. I, 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 I wouldn't have it. accepted it. <laughs> yes. I couldn't have accepted it. No. no, 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 no. Game no. of Thrones hadn't hardened us at that point. Oh, like, right. I see. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't prepared, but yeah. We're uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god, I love how like last week's episodes are like, kind of rolling into this one too. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, swords. Just just swords. Wait, 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 till, wait till next week when we do the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um so yeah so so we finally but because he gets brutalized as well it's not just an easy fight yeah, like, he gets yeah. stabbed twice in both arms and you think oh like that's kind of brutal and he's just no selling like we'll go back to the wrestling term now he's not selling like the the hits he's like pretending like these don't matter and he's just saying his mantra over and over again and every time he says it he's getting it's getting more stronger it's almost like he's taking power from it as well which yeah. is quite uh and that's where as you said that's where the film grabs you by the heart and that i think that's where a lot of people do fall in love with this movie at this point yeah that was yeah. my favorite bit that mm. was my yeah. favorite i absolutely love that and just <laughs> the passing of the, the the dread pirate robert's baton yeah when like when he was like yeah he, he when I was on this ship with this Dread Pirate Robert, it wasn't him. Mm -hmm. And he got it from someone else. And then he got and he gave it to me. And mm -hmm. da -da -da, so I will give oh, it to you. Yes. So he's got a purpose. And I was just like, oh, you give him a purpose. <laughs> but yeah. the, again, like I said, foreshadowing it through as well. Like I said, you can't, like now watching it as an adult, I was going, ah, I know where this is leaning to now. Ah. But as a kid, it was kind of like just subtly done as well. He was good. Have you ever thought about being a pirate? Yeah. So it's just nicely done like that as well. It's like, and it's like I don't know what to do. Revenge is taken away. All like my that, that's all I've thought about. I was good. I don't. And he didn't want to go back to the alcohol and being like say the bum type thing. Purposeless. Yes. No purpose. Which yeah. is even worse than like like having a purpose and not being able to fulfill it. That purpose kept him going. And now he's got now. He's just like, well, all my life I've been learning how to sword fight to avenge my father. I have done it now. Mm -hmm. Should I start working in herons? Or, <laughs> you know, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> what? As, as what happens well. with so much of us now, yes. Um, Honestly, genuinely though, like how I felt the morning after my wedding. I was like, <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> I've given Poxy everything. What's the what's my purpose? That's it now. Like that's top tier. The rest is shit from here on out. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> We'll have to we'll have to make sure like each episode of the podcast Sonia's on that like will give a, a grand give me purpose. purpose. <laughs> right, so we'll get so Sonia's purpose now is to get us to ten thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel. Right, <laughs> next week I'll wear a low cut. <laughs> now there's it. And it's Lord of the Rings. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> oh, right, I've got like a weird white dress. I could totally do like a Galadriel type cosplay. <laughs> Fucking do like, it. I'm not dying hair though. Oh. I need a, has anyone got a blonde wig? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just dress up like an orc like years ago. It's fine. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> It's fine. Uh, I, I know what I'm on here for and it's not for me looks. It's okay. It's for my technical ability that I know only that. <laughs> but yes. Um... But yeah, coming back to the movie, because the, the film oh. does go to the extremes of ridiculousness as well. Because when they find, like, 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 like before the big battle scenes and everything like that, the, the, they've made the plan that they need uh, Wesley to basically make the plan so they can get in past 60, or was it 30? It was it 30 men? 60. Because they said, us two can't take other men, but someone with the planning, the brains, the <laughs> fighting skills, and the strength of yeah. Wesley can defeat these men. It's the brains, the strength, and the steel, isn't it? Yeah. So and that... I love that scene as well when he's like nodding his head because he, like, Andre's got his hand on <laughs> Wesley's head because he can't move. He's just like, <laughs> but that... oh my God. Because, then... yeah, he was dead for a bit, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. But that's the thing, though, because he was the dead. He gets the Billy Crystal and goes, he's not quite, he's not like fully <laughs> dead. He's just a bit dead. <laughs> Billy Crystal <laughs> in that film, man. I love when he's like, um, 
like he's like oh if he's alive he'll speak his true words and he's like what keep what do you fight for and he presses on his chest and he's like true love and he's like he clearly said to blame <laughs> <laughs> he's like, which means to bluff he's a card player <laughs> the, uh, the physical comedy in Cariel's is ridiculous oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the, uh, what that man can or oh, is willing to do mm-hmm. is just amazing and it's so weird to see his like his choice in movies from his starting point yeah, to now yeah. it's such a different contrast because like you've got Robin Hood Men in Tights mm-hmm. yeah. you've got this he was in Twister, yeah. which he, there's a bit of a dick in that. So that's, mm. that's like the prog- That's the starting point, isn't it? To solve, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Twister, yeah. but it's it's Twister a shame because each like when we talk about Carriellis, there'll probably be like anyone like if you're not like a movie buff or like a like someone who loves movies like we do, you probably just won't know him that well. You you'll, mm. you'll have seen him in certain things or recognize him in certain things, but you won't really know his body of work and. He probably didn't hit the heights that he probably should have, because as Kelly yeah. said, he's a very beautiful looking man. He, Fucking yeah. gorgeous. He, he, <laughs> he, he can act. He's got comedy. Like, see, he's got timing. Like, he's got like jokes and stuff, and he's and he does that all uh, smouldering look as well. Like, he, yeah. he yeah. does that well. He, he can pull smouldering off. <laughs> and 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 again, like if you go to like in the Saw movies as well, he's brilliant in that. Fucking he's brilliant because that could he have is. been so bad or so overdone or not done right and it was kind of like the na- the right level of like cynicism the right level of overacting the la- right level of terror and like even when he's like freaking out sawing his own leg off you actually <laughs> feel it and, and you can actually <laughs> get goosebumps like thinking about because you, you're in that situation I you love just that. Ut- utter I panic love kicks, <laughs> kicks in oh, you love a good so- look, good leg saw good leg sawing. <laughs> I remember when I went to see when I went to see so, so, so. Uh, <laughs> did you were you up or you were you down <laughs> Well, I'm, I remember I used to get the the twenty into the town. I used to when I used to go to work. God knows where I used to work. I, th- I think it was when I worked in Claire's accessories or something. Fucking shit. No quiz. I used to work in fucking quiz. Fucking shit. Anyway, um, there was a massive like billboard poster, and it was for Saw. And I remember looking at it, and it said, "Dare you see Saw?" Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "What the fuck?" I remember I was going out with this lad, and I was like, "Hey, yeah, Dean, we need to go and see Saw." And he went, "See Saw?" I went, "No." <laughs> See, so <laughs> when to see it, oh my god, because mm-hmm. I didn't twist. know what it was going to be about. It was yeah. fucking mint, yeah. Fucking so, mint. But Carrie Car- Car- is just such a, a chameleon, mm-hmm. like yes, he yeah. is completely unrecognizable. He's a bit like from... Gary Oldman, I think, in that regard, Absol- like not the same kind, not of to the ex, not choice, to that level, like, but even but you're like, oh, is... it's, it's Gary, that's him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I've I only recently realized he was, um. In Liar Liar, he's the the claw's gonna get you. It's the claw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the claw. Uh, the, the, the shit dad. The shit yeah, dad. The shit oh, dad. it's yeah. the claw. Oh, the uh, claw's go- it's gonna get uh, you. Hello. He should have he should have like getting so big and he was like so, he, in the nineties yeah. would have been his time because movies like this and um Robin Hood Men in Tights. Well wasn't yeah. Robin Hood Men in Tights a flop, didn't it? Yes, it, but it's still got a cult following. Yeah. yeah. Well, so did this. This didn't yeah. do great. It wasn't no. until it went to VHS that it was like mm-hmm. it oh. became big in America. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. He just he could he could have done like so much in the nineties, but hey, I'm kind of glad he didn't because mm-hmm. I don't right? think he would have just... done what he did. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like you mm-hmm. know, it wouldn't have took him on that path. Mm-hmm. It, it it almost seems when when I'm watching him on screen. And like then remembering, oh God, he's the guy in this. He's the guy in this. When he's acting, he just looks like he's having a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. hey, he just blends in. in. A he's a little oh, chameleon. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like kind of you see actors who you know kind of have this one role and then the blow up and then the it almost seems like they need to top the last film again and yeah. again and again and they can't whereas he's just got like this steady stream of like canny good roles and he just looks like he's having a good good laugh mm-hmm. which is great lovely oh, definitely yeah. and I, Marvelous. but I, I, I do think he should get a bit more praise than he does that he probably oh, does yeah. or, or recognition yeah. shall we see it um, he's got my heart he's got your heart <laughs> that's, that's, that's all he needs from that that's all he needs this podcast appreciation like that's yeah. all he needs is he's the over. stamp of approval mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely he's in um he's in stranger <laughs> things as well isn't he is he, is he? yeah, yeah he's, the mayor. He? he's the mayor oh shit is... Right. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. 
the mayor of the town. He's what he gets beaten up by um get in by Hopper in season two. <laughs> <laughs> the the season with the Russian. I think I can't, season I th- two. Yeah, because I think Stranger Things is announced for later next year. Now the last season. Oh, they're so, just gonna keep like dragging it out. Aren't yeah. they? Like maybe next year, maybe the year after. Yeah, yeah. yeah might be lucky. They've said. Um, I told, I, I've they said end of two thousand twenty-four. I think that's the number now because that's why I've moved because we originally had a review ep- review episode for Stranger Things in the summer just to like to, oh. to do one again. But I've moved that now to late the year so we can binge watch <coughs> all of them and do like a full completion full for on. it. Yeah. <gasps> Can't wait to first to be able to say he is a completed episode for Stranger Things. Yeah. That's gonna be fucking insane. But I did totally forget he was in that. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> the Manny what's his Mandy what's his face? He Mandy was in Patikinin, Patikinin, whatever he's called. He yeah. was Patinkin. in Patinkin. Patinkin. He was in Criminal Minds. He played one of my favorite characters, which was Gideon in the first few series. Fucking amazing character. And he left that to go and he left it. He just walked away from it, handed his crew and cast and crew letters to say, I'm very sorry. The subject matter is too hard for me. It's too difficult. I can't get involved in this. Blah, de, blah, blah. I'm going to go and do Homelands. <laughs> he was yeah. very good in I Homeland. I never got though. my head around that. <laughs> Homeland, he was very yeah. good in Homeland, though. Like, see, he's he... been really vocal about his role in this as well, you know. like He's, he's, very, he? he's very anti-violence and anti-revenge. And he always says that his favourite line from the film isn't you kill my father, prepare to die, which is mm-hmm. what the one everyone makes him say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His favourite quote is the one about revenge. So when he says, you know, I've been in the revenge business all my life and I don't mm-hmm. know what to do now. Like mm-hmm. he says that's his favourite quote because he's like, that to me shows that revenge shouldn't be mm-hmm. your purpose in life. Like, so yeah. he's very much a, a, a sultan of peace now. <laughs> well, I'll tell like you really what my favourite, my favourite line by him, I've wrote the fucker down. <clears throat> I wonder if he is using the same wind we are using. <laughs> <laughs> I literally pissed myself <laughs> laughing at that with the boat. I wonder if he's using the same wind we are using. <laughs> 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 let, let, let's talk about some of the most ridiculous things in this movie because there is some crazy okay. ass like like things that... of unusual size. Yes, <laughs> that was one That's big so mass of rats. Oh, it's so funny. And Who the way they called them the Rowls. The Rowls. The Rowls. So... The Rowls. And I was like, Rowling the, Rowls? the Rat. <laughs> I fucking rodents of unusual size. size. Is, that, like, is, that, is that Roland's cousin? <laughs> And then there was random like pits of fire that just burst out of the ground for no apparent reason or no explanation. Why not? It's fantasy. It's um, fantasy. <laughs> and the it's eels. Like, honestly, but think about like other stuff the like eels. Labyrinth the has eels. the bog of eternal stench. It's yeah. like it's no different, really. Like yeah, it's just it's as fantasy. like it's just as odd. And like as a kid, not gonna lie, was terrified of the bog of eternal stench. Yeah, oh, I was like, I bet oh, that yeah. stinks. I bet it stinks. <laughs> bet it's, uh, a, a bet it stinks of time? like Joe's bedroom, doesn't it, Sonia? <laughs> 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 Look at you trying to stir the pot between the siblings, man. Yeah, I know. Hey, Joe always <laughs> does it with Sonia. too strong. Joe always does it with Sonia. To be fair, he always picks on her, like on the Discord, then doesn't let her res- respond. Um, oh, but true. but true. yes, I'll always stand up for you, Sonia. Don't worry. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but even the mountain they climb isn't that called the fucking something of like insanity oh. <laughs> you know what i mean everything yeah. has this like just totally like whoa name and i'm just because at, at the time i mean i think you were either labyrinth or mm-hmm. princess bride mm-hmm. you know what i mean like because i was all about labyrinth i used to I was watch labyrinth. that over, mm-hmm. and, I was over labyrinth. and over it's very sort of like the same sort of vein except mm-hmm. this is more as you say that sort of satirical mm-hmm. um just just looking at itself in the mirror and just going, ha ha, that is really funny. You know, at, whereas, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's yeah. Look at the movies that came out around about this time, it was like, as I said, the Night, uh, Len, um, Never Ending Story, Labyrinth, um, yeah. like I say, the Princess Willow. Bride, then Willow Dark. came out afterwards Willow. as well, Dark Crystal. Can you put Dark Crystal in there? Yeah, it was, it's, it was a fantasy one. It was just, me. yeah. Time Bandits. Time Bandits. I oh. fucking yeah. hate Time Bandits so much. Are you just oh, someone who loves Flight of the fantasy? Navigator. Flight of the Navigator as well. Yeah. Flight of the Navigator. <laughs> it's on the list because oh. oh. I've not seen it. Um, yeah, if there's someone who really loves fantasy right now, like I should be all over this, 
but on a time band just ruined me as a kid. I fucking <laughs> hate that movie so much that it like you've heard this put... first here, Chris. Sam doesn't like short people. You're you've been <laughs> warned. <laughs> That's so harsh. I can't believe it. Oh. I can't believe you just said that to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Based on what words came out of my mouth, it didn't. You are shortest. <laughs> but no, time. It's really funny because it's one of my mum's favorite films. Like she loves it, and she is really like she's four eleven, so kind of fit in really. But um, yeah, this, it really ruined us as, as a child that I didn't like this type of like mm-hmm. this type of fantasy. Like I didn't like this. But, I didn't like Princess Bride. I've never watched it. Uh, Labyrinth. I'm not really the biggest fan of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dark Crystal can go and fuck off. Skeksis can get I've in the fucking I've never seen bin. Dark Crystal. Mm. Oh, I think my granddad made us watch it and the Skeggs he's just scared though. It did. It, it was this. scary oh. though. Um but trying to think about the time bands that was Terry Gillum wasn't it? Directed. Yeah. yeah, so it was yeah. like again Monty Python fails so around about the But like he went like he went wild or like think of some of his other fantasy like films. Brazil. Like Brazil. Yeah. Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. Does anyone can, if if someone can explain to me what happens in Brazil and the point is I can I, tell you. Yeah. It's basically nineteen eighty four. Right. <laughs> I I was just about to say I used to teach I am so fucking lost. <laughs> I used to teach 1984. Yeah. Um, when I was a teacher, and so we're going upper up up brow now. So we're going upper oh, brow, hold on guys. A <laughs> I used to <laughs> do different because uh, basically part of the exam was um, this idea of you know different interpretations. So we looked at how um, 1984 was kind of like transmuted in other mm-hmm. ways, and I used to get the kids to watch uh, bits of Brazil. Right, mm-hmm. okay. And they were like, yeah. what the fuck are you making me watch? And I was just like, it's this. Brazil! You've oh, never heard of it's Brazil? Wild. It's no. wild. It, uh, it's honestly, wild. It's the, I lived a very uh, sheltered life, Paul. We all know, know this. I know, but like Brazil <laughs> is like it, Brazil is crackers. renowned for one of the most crackers, batshit, yeah. crazy movies. It's got like angels and weird shit in type thing. But, like, like Icarus? Oh. Icarus, crazy Icarus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'll Icarus. have a look. I, I, honestly, I'm being deadly serious. I've never heard of it. Um, there was another no one else. In, Equilibrium is totally unrelated, but Equilibrium, which I love, which is like got a lot of hate. Christian Bale, gun, mm. gun. Oh, yeah. That mm. is 1984 as well. But it oh. came out the same time as the Matrix, and it was very Matrix S. That's why yeah, everyone. Yeah, thought, yeah people. They missed the social commentary in there, and yeah. I, I think oh. that's me. That's me. English literature head coming out. But oh like, my god! They, they missed the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's... I've just seen the post. I've just seen some pictures from Brazil. Yeah. With the woman with the fa- the stretchy face. I get yeah. that yeah. reference. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have never fucking heard of this. Before. Oh, it's okay, great! That's something to look at when we Gotta finish. Watch it. Oh, um, gotta watch it. But yeah. there was Sammy Gillum is amazing. Like, on, oh yeah, there used uh-huh. to be on my Ghostbusters VHS. It's like it was the second trailer. So I had the first movie, the second movie. They both had their own trailers, and they had an episode of Batman in the middle. But the second trailers was Baron Mon Baron Mon Mon, Mon-, Mon- Munchausen. Munchausen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hook me, that looked terrifying. Mm-hmm. That actually I thought, that you said, reminded... I thought you said hook there. I was like, hook. Aye, hook, I was hook, like, hook, 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 hook. I can't say it properly. Is it Baron von, von Munchausen? Munch- Munchausen. Uh, uh, yes, uh huh. And that looked like time bandits to where I was like, no. Yeah, I don't, yeah. want, to, I don't <laughs> want to see things like that. But the thing is, if I watch time bandits now, I know fine well I'm going to fucking love it. Yeah, yeah. But as a kid, yeah. I hated it. I was yeah. terrified of it. I hated it. Didn't like it. Well, I and think... I think if you've got that aversion from when you were a kid, it yeah. fucking sticks with you. And it, yeah. even if you're like, oh, I'll give it a chance now that I'm adult, you've just got that underlying mm-hmm. fucking hate it when I was a <laughs> That's kid. That's me and food. <laughs> but saying that though, now now you've mentioned that film, I'm going to have to add that to the list because we're going to have to do Which do one? an episode on uh, on Hook at one point as well. Oh, oh yeah. you need to do an episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to do an episode going back to Terry uh, Gilliam as uh, Tidelands. Mm. Uh, that, that is one of my mm. fucking favourite Mm-hmm. favorite films it is so mm-hmm. fucking crap is but it's just it's just trying to find these two. <laughs> 12 monkeys as well 12 <laughs> monkeys <gasps> fucking yeah. hell yeah never seen it just do the terry gilliam backlog right <laughs> yeah <laughs> terry gilliam did 12 monkeys mm-hmm. yeah yeah did um wow. fear and loathing as well didn't yeah, he fear and loathing I'm, I'm, I'm not getting on that idea because because we need to be on drugs to talk about fear and loathing and that's <laughs> not gonna happen i never watched it for the fear i'll I've bring the car because i don't <laughs> I started watching. I bring the cup. I've never actually seen it all the way through because I generally didn't understand what was going on. You've got to be on drugs brain. to understand it. You've literally got to uh, be like on mind bending drugs to say, right? I can understand this thing. Uh, 
So I'm good then. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah. Um, so regarding the film, like say we got we, like as as was it being all fantasy and grandparents done the story, and I do like during the movie as well. It does jump back to uh, the grandson and the grandfather having the conversations. Mm. Yeah. And he's kind of getting into it, and the grandfather's doing the whole tease. Oh, I'll go away and we'll talk about it to another. Day. And he's like, no, no, come back. Uh, tell me, finish the story. Um, do the, do the fall in love and stuff, but um. I love the interaction between Wesley and Humperdinck when he's basically on the bed and he's basically <laughs> paralysed and you think, oh, shit, he's, he's going to come up and, and he finds the inner strength because of true love to get off that bed and show that he's strong and holds it. He's steel out uh, straight. He's what? He's steel. He's steel. He's steel. He's steel. He's steel. He's... I was going to say to I missed that bit because <laughs> I would have remembered that. It was a different version of the Princess Bride, but he holds his, his st- holds holds a steady, straight, and and oh, firm. Um... <laughs> wow! I, literally, like I, I, you know, when you have like an intrusive thought, I was like, "Don't say that, Sonia. Don't say that." But now I have to tell you that I, I should, it would have been funnier if I said it when you said that. But I was going to say the princess wide. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell! Oh, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> saying that though, that's like the, say, that my... is the ep- that's the name of this episode, Princess that's Bride. Right. Princess Bride. Right. Right. Log off, log off. <laughs> we'll finish it up. But yeah. Um. To be fair though, I I need to learn how to keep me gob after last episode when when all I kept on saying was uh the pit picture behind you with the guy in the toilet looked like he was wanking on the yeah. back of your head. But yeah, like, I, 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 I went back and we watched it and it was when Joe was just like, I love that Sonia's like moved her head to hide <laughs> the picture since Paul has said that. <laughs> 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 There's a crossbow there. <laughs> it's really is. He's, he's there's, not no, just... there's no penis. I was just about to get into a really mint point about, and it was going to lead into Auburn and Martell. And then Paul's like, "Yeah, it looks like Tywin's wanking behind your head." It's <laughs> like, "Yep, that's gone." <laughs> that's what he said. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> so when we get the ending, we get the happy ending. Like, say, Wesley gets the wife. Uh, like Montaigne gets wife. his purpose, um, because that's all. All like say the wanted was back in the day was to get his wife, even though Sonia would probably disagree. Said, "Don't do it. It takes away all your like say your, your hopes and dreams in one aspect. Just but, have the lead up. Just the lead up. Yeah. Just, just, to, just oh, keep, just keep planning it. Just keep just planning keep the planning it. <laughs> plan the win. So, my question is, I know this, as you said, is nineteen eighty seven. It is a little bit dated. Let's be honest. There is mm. aspects. There is certain things that. Like there's a magic to this, yeah. but when the t- like Hollywood are doing remakes or doing different versions, would you be averse to them remaking the Princess Bride? They can fuck the fuck off, then it and leave it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah. think it needs to be shit. Right. I've literally put overall, what a stupid fucking film. I loved it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, right. Yeah, I do agree. I think this needs to stay where it is. Like they yeah. don't need to touch movies like this because mm-hmm. you're never gonna you're never gonna get mm-hmm. that movie. That, yeah. yeah. No. You're no. not gonna get it. You, nah, it's timeless. You just, mm-hmm. And exactly. the thing the thing about the time that it's set in means it doesn't need to be modernized because no. you're just yeah. gonna modernize something that looks like it's old. So yeah. what's the point? Just keep it old. Like no. yeah. Yeah. keep no. it budget, keep it funny. Well you're never Although, gonna get you're never gonna get an Andre the, you're never gonna get Andre the Giant no. again, though. That's the thing. So yeah. I was going to say during lockdown, I don't know if you, you've seen this, but now that you've seen the film, you might go out of your way to watch other clips. A bunch of actors who love The Princess Bride reenacted it. Right. Clip by Why clip. I feel their, like I've heard this. In their own gardens and in their own houses and they've oh. all spl- spliced them together. So it's like Paul Rudd and like... Yes. See, that's <laughs> funny because so that's a good. homage. It's yes. a homage. Yeah, it's, it's not a, a remake. It's a fucking... It's oh. so good. It's so... Like, if you get the chance to watch it... I am going to go, go and watch it because I love shit like that. <laughs> like, so I love, I love it's like they're, they're using like little toys to make it look but they're putting them in front mm. of the camera so it looks like they're really close like it's oh, so good I love that I love stuff like that like I loved all the reunions that they did in lockdown through yeah. Zoom and that and uh, Zoe Bell doing a whole fight sequence with all these amazing female stunt women fucking loved it I want to watch it yeah I want to watch the it the absolute creativity like that people did when you just couldn't leave your fucking house it's just yeah. like the arts yeah. you know yeah. the arts could have totally dwindled and died and we would have you know like you know cinemas hey. obsolete and things like that but people kept it alive 
But we I'm started thinking, a right, podcast because house. of it. You know, yeah, it's just like I'm in my house. I started streaming. What can I do? Yeah. You know, we and it, it just it, it, it's fucking amazing. This is um, what you get. Is this? <laughs> this is lockdown, people. So yeah. bring back lockdown and see more, more, more things can happen. See what else we've we can not do. left. <laughs> I will say at the end of this uh, film, like. Because the, the end really is um, the the love between the grandparent and the child. Yeah. Because you know he finishes the story and he's like, you know, mincing off the way he's Al Colombo, you know, bit mm-hmm. grey, blah, blah, blah. and he's just like, oh, will you come back uh, tomorrow and read it again? Mm-hmm. And he says, as you wish, a eh, fucking hell, yeah. Niagara Aww. Falls, Niagara Aww. Falls. I was oh, like, yeah. oh my god, so... because he loves his grandson. No, I fucking love that. That was just lush. It, so... it was just. A lovely end, lovely, yeah. lovely story within a story. Even, mm. even mint. though I kept getting Mandalorian feels and just kept thinking, this is the way. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> but again, playing devil's advocate because I've, I've heard what you have all said, and I do, like, say, understand that. I do agree. You're wrong. No, no, you're going to tell us you're up for it. No, no, I do, I do agree with, but, but I do think there is a, a way of doing it that doesn't mm. piss on the Princess Bride or anything like that. And Kelly nailed it. Some people it. might like that. Yeah, but <laughs> and Kelly that's and Kelly, wise. no, that's fine. And Kelly nailed it just in the last <gasps> sentence before. It's not about the story that he told then. There could be other stories. You could have right. not the Princess Bride, right. but it could be like the storyteller, where you've. I know Columbo's dead, so you kind of and Fred Savage is a bit old and. Like, and Andre the Giant's dead too. Yeah, but, but what you could... and allegedly in a day. Peter yeah. Cook's dead now. Yeah, Peter Cook's yeah. dead. Mel Smith's so dead. Mel. Mel Smith's dead. Yeah. But um, so basically the... everyone's dead. Yeah. What they could do again, it doesn't have to be that child and that grandfather. You could have, like, say, a weekly TV show where it's basically stories where the grandparent tells the the grandson or granddaughter, um, like mm. tales of fantasy. And you could why do, do it... I think I've already seen this? I think that's... why 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 does this ring a bell of a of a of a man that looked like a hedgehog? I know Jim Henson done the storyteller like yes, a few years yes, ago. Uh-huh, but yes, again, uh-huh. when it you could, were seeing about that, it could be like, a similar oh, type of film because if you think about it, the Princess Bride, isn't as you said, it's a story within a story. Yeah. Uh-huh. So again, that concept and anything like that, you don't have to go with the Princess Bride. But you could do fantasy and you can do it nice and sweet. You can do it dark like a never ending story. That could be a weekly thing or like say a six episode or an eight episode series where it tells you different stories of fantasy. And it would be nice to have for kids because if you look at the fantasy that kids get now, like we get great fantasy, don't get us wrong, but they're not yeah. kids' fantasy like we got in the 80s. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's catering. Yeah. It's catering to us. Fantasy caters to us now. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It is for the kids in the 80s who were now in their 40s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it telling does, you yeah. Now, we were fucking blessed mm-hmm. to have had oh, the films yeah. Yeah. we had grown up because at the minute, my son, uh, Huxley, who's like five, the shit he's watching is absolutely, he's watching this thing on YouTube. And mm-hmm. it's it's just like it it just makes no sense. It's like these little Wilhelm scream comes on, and it's just all these like robots, and it's just like oh oh, and it, it's just it's it's just craziness. It's just animated craziness. And I'm like, he's pissing himself laughing. It's just like this head coming out of a toilet, skibbly toilet. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? When I was five. When mm-hmm. I was five, I was watching Labyrinth. I was watching fucking Gremlins. He's watching a fucking he's come out of a toilet. What is going to happen to toilet, him when he's an man. adult? Fucking skibbity it's... toilet. He's five. Do you it's not... a man's head. It's toilet. massive, though. <laughs> skibbity <laughs> toilet is massive. Yeah. It's just it's ridiculous. I've never heard of think... it. Yeah. Someone at work no, was talking about blessings, the other day. Someone, count your blessings. Someone at work. <laughs> but do you not think, like, I know we didn't have uh, like say when we go back to like like the good old days of the eighties where you had five well four channels and you had to wait six months for like the movies to come out on the video from the cinema if you didn't have a man in the band. Oh, I it think. was always six month, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, so like, say, people didn't have the fucking born now. Like. I don't or know one how. Year for, or one year for it to come had... on Sky. 
Oh, oh I, I didn't. Why didn't have Sky? Sky. Yeah. Well, I had the Princess Bride on VHS, but it was recorded from TV, and mm. it used to start with something else. And I used to always think I was watching this something <laughs> else. I can't remember what it was. Mm. And I used to be like, "Yeah, like getting ready for it." And then it would just be like Columbo sitting at the bedside, and I'd be like. <laughs> The fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? But why, yeah, I, why is this old man on screen? <laughs> but I still own, I still own the VHSs um, from mine and my sister's childhood of our Christmas VHSs. So it's like all of like the these Christmas cartoons just like mushed into one. Mm-hmm. Um. I love videos like that where it's like you just sort of unexpected you don't know what's going to come yeah. on next. What's next? But, but as I was saying with like... And it's like back, EastEnders. <laughs> back, back in the day type thing um, or if you got like if you were lucky there was some 18 movie that used to parents forgot to tape over. Um, mm. But with um, like what kids and everything get now there's like an oversaturation there's, all, there's too many options there's too many things but And I think we've talked about this so much in the podcast before when it comes to, and I know I'm biased when it comes to 80s movies, there was a lot more risks, there was a lot more creativity to to make something that wasn't just looking to make a franchise, it was basically to make something that could tell a story or was entertaining. Um, I know, like, if you look in the horror film, generally, like, like they've got lots of sequels and stuff like that, but generally a lot of the movies that came out was like one and done. If you think about like say the what Goonies, yeah. Stand by Me, um, like say the Princess Bride, Labyrinth. Like if you thought about th- if them movies got made today, like how many labyrinths would we have? How oh, many different yeah. like oh, offshoots? Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. But we would yeah. only have one Bulge. David Bowie's crush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't you Stop can't replicate hell. that. You know, the only one that, bulge. <laughs> watching that as a child, right? Mm. I can't believe oh, I, just, I wasn't drawn to it because now I watch it because Huxley loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just like, my eyes are just like, whoa, 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 penis, penis. <laughs> <laughs> Lots yeah. of penis. Have, penis. You heard, <laughs> have you heard, have you heard, have you heard who they've, who they've in talks to cast for the sequel? There's a sequel. No, no, they're in talks. Who? T- Tilda Swanton. Oh, I would actually, I would watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would watch yeah, it in a heartbeat. Okay. Yeah, and there's a fucking comedian. She's like... fucking amazing. And if she did it, andro- if she was androgynous, like yeah. if she yes. did it like more masculine, I would watch that. Well, yeah. for she did a yeah. shoot where she was dressed in his. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it his pale blue suit? And she, yeah. she looked yeah. absolutely. I so... Fucking love that. I'd watch that. I thought you were going to see wrong. like some sort of like really <laughs> like the rock, <laughs> like the rock or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd have been hilarious, Jeremy, or something. You know what I mean? No, but no, that that that's supposed to be the discussion. It's been like in development hell for a few years, but like that's who they had pegged in for the David. My interest is peaked. I might not like it. But my interest is peaked because I, I just think that, well, that's if what it I do. ain't broke, don't fix yeah, it. That's... Ain't broke, don't fucking fix well, it. Well, to be fair, like a few weeks ago, we had a discussion about how would you do Back to the Future again, and we actually no, got we in... don't. no, but we got into a conversation <laughs> that don't. it could work in a way if you don't like TV show, like if you don't have <laughs> uh, the original cast, but if you think of like the Doc's uh, children, like say Jules mm. and Vern, um, that in essence could work in a way where you're not shitting on the original but again we're getting a sequel oh you're not though (laughs) but we're getting (laughs) we're getting a sequel this year or next year depends when it comes out and that's going to be very controversial the beetlejuice too oh yeah (laughs) michael keaton's in it so i'm fucking watching it's original cast though isn't it yeah Yeah, Yeah. it's original cast original director yeah jenna ortega's playing uh thingy's daughter um, yeah. what you called? Um, but no, saying right. that though, Lydia. we we got Lydia. told off on the nerdy up north Facebook page, you know. Yeah, oh, what? yeah, this is yes. fucking ridiculous. Go on. So what? someone uh, leaked an image of Michael Keaton in the Beetlejuice outfit, like for the new movie, and yeah. it was all over internet, all over Facebook, all over Twitter, uh, Instagram. So I went, oh, that's good. So I shared it. Guess who got told off for sharing un uh, non copyrighted material? This guy, <laughs> this guy. Where are you? You there? there, there yeah. This guy. <laughs> that me? Yeah, I got told off saying um, um, basically any more like that, and our page would have been taken down. So yes. What? So, so it was a copyrighted a... image. It was a leaked no. image. It was a leaked so... image that was being shared all over the internet. Everyone and their fucking mother had it. Mm. You can go and share as much as you want when it comes to the Deadpool movie, but fuck me, mm. share an image on Beetlejuice and you can't get your hands slapped. Yeah. I don't want to get started on the whole Dead move, Deadpool yeah. leaks because I'll lose my temper and I don't. But want it to. wasn't even a penis. No. It was yeah, just Michael yeah. Keaton. 
I thought you were going to say, oh, like, guess who got, like, done for, like, sharing nude images of my Oh, no, no. No, we're like... talking about David Bowie's crotch. It just makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> that like... right. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. No, but, um, <laughs> Facebook... Crazy? Yeah, Facebook, I can't work out at times. Like, certain aspects, there's... <laughs> you, got, uh, you got barred from Drop Dead Fred. Drop Dead, because I said Kelly Drop Dead Fred. And I got, uh, like I said, I got you, banned you for two years of Facebook uh, for that. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> I got banned for to- by saying 12 monkeys as well because someone thought I was calling someone a monkey. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah. You can't. I've, I get worried now over movie titles that I say. Like, I put on the other can't day, uh, Freddy got fingered when you put the Jason and Freddy picture up. Yeah. And I thought that was so fucking funny. And I was like, oh, God, what happens if, like, Goodbye, like the word fingered? <laughs> <laughs> well, Freddy didn't appreciate being fingered or didn't, like, say, didn't, app- didn't ask to be fingered, but, yeah. Um, Freddy yeah. got fingered. <laughs> Fuck Facebook, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yes, it's, it's, it's like all AI, though, you know, isn't it? Like yeah. AI picks up all the shit and just yeah. blocks it instantly. Bullshit. No, Bullshit. it's bollocks. Well, I got told off again the other day for a post I when I shared our Tupper and Dale versus Evil podcast. Yeah. Because mm. um, one of the images I used was a a, a half a corpse, but it's part yeah. of the movie. It's part of the actual promotional. <laughs> um. But yeah. Was it the penis part? No, no, it was just uh, just just them car- just them dragging a pair of legs. But yeah, yeah. just half a, half a person. Yeah, I got really upset over that. <laughs> maybe they, maybe they got no, maybe it got removed because it wasn't the penis part. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I appealed that one, so I, I don't know if that one went anywhere. But yeah, like I'm sick of getting no, told off. Literally, for Christmas, I'm asking for an extra finger. Right. So right. any picture that's taken of me, I'm just saying I didn't fucking do it. AI. AI. I, I, I didn't. I didn't do it. AI. I thought you were gonna go back it. to this movie and be like, Yeah, I'm yes, six that, I, I thought fingers. that's a great tangent. Well done, AI. Kelly. Well done. You brought us she back. Brought it back. She brought it back. So the movie. If we're gonna rate it, rate it out of five, like we normally do now. Oh. So we'll go with Sonia first. What would you rate this out of five? I can't not rate it a five. Right. Okay. Because because it is. Mm-hmm. timeless and it is a classic and like kelly said it's so bad i love it Sh- shit fantastic I, I just can't not love it like love i word. love how it takes the piss i love the cast i love the wholesomeness of their friendships mm-hmm. outside of filming mm-hmm. i love how silly and far-fetched it is it makes me laugh at the films i loved as a kid mm-hmm. but in a way that still makes me love those films yeah like, so yeah it's cool. a five for me so i'll i'll go on next as we the two people that watched it as a as a killed a children so we've got the nostalgia factor so i would probably give it a four not because it's not like i, I don't love it you. just because i think there's not very many elements i would change that that's that's probably like the standing point um th- there's so many memorable things that you watch and even when you watch it back now and you get that little jog of memory and you think i i love that aspect that's why i loved and and um, like just by saying to people as you wish this week, and people no, instantly get it. It's just like say lovely. So that's why I would give that? it a four. So we'll go to Kelly. What would you rate? It? Right. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad I watched it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm glad I watched it at this age because, to be honest, I think if I watched it as a kid, I wouldn't have appreciated it. I would have mm-hmm. just seen it for the action. Whereas mm-hmm. as an adult, I can actually see it for what it's meant to be. And I honestly think Rob Reiner mm-hmm. was just like, hey, yeah, guys, let's do this fucking just <laughs> shit tip of a film. It'll be a laugh. We'll have a good laugh. You know, it's like a we'll party on film. Mm-hmm. You know, well, get Andre fun. around. Some of fun, guys. Have a part and and it just, it, it, it's just, I liked it. It was wholesome. It was, like I said before, a, a Mars bar for the brain. I will give it a four because I think five would be mm. like, you know, oh my God, I fucking love this film. <laughs> I don't get it, love it. I like it. And I'm really looking forward to making an MLT. <laughs> Is it lean? A mutton, <laughs> lettuce, and tomato sandwich because mm. I think a bit of mint sauce, mutton. Mm. Yeah. Fucking memo. <laughs> I, th- I think it's one of those films that you can pass down to you, like, you, like if you've got kids or if you've got small children and, relatives, two. and you that's <laughs> I what, I that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying from Kelly's perspective but I don't so I can't really talk well but, I mean, like, we so, can't pass it on to our cats can no, we? I'm, 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 but, but I've, like, say, I've, I've got a niece and nephew and like, say, I would love to experience oh. the movie with them like say there's so many of these films that you can watch back with and, and 
get their response. I know. But what's strange, mm. coming back to this film, I actually got it from CEX online, but it came as part of a threesome of, oh, of DVDs. Yeah. And do you know what it was? Fucking Knight's Tale. Right. With Heath Ledger. Okay. Mm-hmm. Princess Good Bride. Thing. And fucking Zorro. Okay. Yeah. It's like the mask. How, how much. How- how much of a shit sandwich is that? Yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's, it's it's kind I of mean, reaching though. It's like it's... Zorro is like the questionable. That's the question mark. Yeah, like, because the nice tail is a good film. Yeah, nice tail is funny three. and it's sword fighting. Yeah. But Zorro is like just, they're just serious. Mm-hmm. They're, they're all just different, and I'm just like, yeah. whose bright fucking idea was it? Like you know, sit at the boardroom table, right? Let's put these three films all together. Yeah. So what would this you? Is... What would you rate it, Sammy, then? I'm going to give it a three. All right. Um, so, so have we changed your mind? Because I know you weren't very that high on it initially. It's not that I was. <laughs> I just, I think I would have appreciated it if I watched it as a, as a mm. younger person. As an adult, I'm kind of like, uh-huh. I think I'm, I've given, I have thoroughly enjoyed us talking about it. And it has probably made us enjoy it more because I've had you guys to talk and like mm-hmm. dish it out with because that's what I love doing with films is like having that discussion afterwards and then like, oh yeah, I mm-hmm. actually did really like that film. Um, so yes, I I enjoyed it for what it was. I wish, I do sometimes wish like with this and Gremlins and other ones that I did watch younger so I can be like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. I totally get it. Like, yeah, this is fucking great. Um, but yeah, I, I found it interesting as well for someone, the fact that like, on Monsters, I do all the like reading and there was not a lot to read on this yeah. because... Yeah. It was just such a, everything was like, because I always type in facts, give mm-hmm. me facts, facts on Princess Bride. And it's like three facts on Fit Princess Bride, like, <laughs> because it was such a great film, like everyone got on, there was nothing controversial. <laughs> everything worked as it was meant to. If it didn't, it was a happy accident. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And now I can get all the Yay. quotes. Yeah. Like I can yeah. I can get all the quotes. I can be a part of that group now. And yeah. you know. I'm just gonna message you like later this week. I'm just gonna be like, I who wish. wants a pe- anybody want a peanut? <laughs> you shouldn't the have rhymes, told us. You should have just caught us off guard. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to stop the cat from attacking the Star War figures there. Sorry. I'm uh, so surprised that I haven't actually come in and caused chaos. So yeah. So do you want to meet Jinx? This is the little girl. Aww. Hi, Jinxy girl. Hi, Baba. This is the oh my pretty. God. Look how pretty. Yeah. That's a oh, that's a little, little, little tuxedo neck. To be. Yeah. She's she's a she's a lovely girl, but you are a little pest, and you like to climb and everything, don't you? Yes. Oh, Which, wait, she's come on, that. Dinah. The first episode of this podcast, Dinah literally jumps on your knee and just sits there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm not moving. This is yeah. my spot. But I really hope Binksy grows up to look like her because mm-hmm. he's got Binks has got the little white spot as well. Yeah, she's knee bother. But um, but yes, um, as a whole, as I said, it's not the perfect movie. It's the movie that. Will cheer up if you're having a bad day. I get that. And I do get that. It, it's a film to make you smile. And I think a lot of movies out there don't really set out to do that. And it's just a lot of fun. And everyone, you can tell everyone's having fun. And that kind of yeah. entices you in to enjoy the fun as well. So I would always recommend this. And I, I know yeah. why this does get so much love. And I can understand why if someone doesn't really understand like the fantasy genre or like say 80s movies shall we say oh 80s in the general (laughs) yeah the probably wouldn't get the love or the feeling for the movie as as we as we do get now yeah but i'm glad you have experienced it and i'm glad you kind of even if you didn't love it you kind of got what they were trying to get there if that makes sense yeah oh absolutely oh absolutely it's such it's such a movie of its time that it's mm-hmm. and, but it's and it almost feels like a bit of a warm blanket mm-hmm. i felt like that when i watched willow like i felt like <gasps> i was just getting a bit of a, a bit of a hug mm-hmm. um and it felt and this is what this felt like because it was like oh there you go there's your childhood you can have it back <laughs> yeah you know, just yeah. for a little bit just yeah. for a little bit just and then, little and then bit when, when it back. comes when it comes off you stand up and your back goes and then you know <laughs> yeah. you, you realize you oh, when you stand yeah. up yeah. you realize oh, you're 40 yeah. year old and you can't actually see what's in front of you <laughs> bless you but yes um so that was our talk on the princess bride i know we've probably missed bits and we've not like we've went yeah. a bit all over the place but to be honest we'll probably pick it up on next week's episode <laughs> to be to be honest <laughs> we'll reconvene at lord of the rings guys don't worry yeah to be honest with the princess bride 
it's a the movie that's all over the place anyway, so it like I say it kind of makes sense to 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 like to do it that way. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed in the chat, and I hope you have been well behaved. Hope Chris, you're still a bell end. Um, Lee, um, like I say, you're a beautiful man. Uh, Adam, you're a seven foot god. Uh, Goodwill, you your goodwill um <laughs> i think that's the nicest you're going to get out of jake you are magnificent yeah. um yeah it's, yes. been, it's been a good sunday night guys i hope good you've sunday. enjoyed it peach as well i know like i say you're about to pop with the pips oh yes um so hopefully like i say that uh, they'll come and visit or if soon. she has already we... yes we don't know I, I, like i say we, possibly we can, we can never know maybe uh, maybe yeah Time travel, you know, guys. So, yeah. Yeah, time it's, travel. Technically, it's Monday tomorrow. You never know. Yes. And don't... It is Sunday today, isn't it? Yes. It is. Yeah, it's yeah, Monday yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sunday. Oh, Mint, I'm, I'm off work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't have a job. <laughs> Someone tell my boss. <laughs> But yes, don't forget Sonia will be twitching as well, so check her out on Somboz, um, playing next all the games. Week. Yes, next, <laughs> next week, week, next Friday. Not, not this Friday, it. yeah, I've already, already done it. it. <laughs> yeah, this is yes. this, this is the future. Yes, she's played games and she bossed that shit, so it's uh, fine. Yeah, I did, did, did I? Yes, <laughs> fucking won. <one. laughs> um, and Kelly, have you got anything pr- to promote other than your lovely um clothing attire? You've been a bit more vocal on the boot club. Yes, I have. Yeah. Promote the boot club. Tell us about the boot club, Kelly. Promote the boot club. (laughs) Yeah, boots and mint. Um, (laughs) I've, I've, um, I've, I've, I don't know. It's just like I'm. I used to teach books. Mm. I used to read a lot. Then I went out of teaching, went into care, didn't have time to read books, and all of a sudden, like I've kind of been looking at my shelf and going, "Fuck me," there's a lot of books on there. And I have read. read them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have been getting a little bit more in j- just um I, I just feel a little bit like a bit of a disconnect because I haven't been reading and it's I'm trying to think like, you know, basically something to bring a little bit of joy into mm. my life, Aww. you know, something that's a little bit mine, you know, and I thought, hey, yeah, let's get <laughs> reading. So I've recently read, um, and I would ad- I would fucking tell every fucker to read this book. It's amazing. Um, Grayson's Perry's uh, The Descent of Man. All right. Fucking mint. I love Grayson Perry, the crazy cross-dresser that he is. He's fucking awesome. Um, I love his artwork. And basically, he is talking about um, masculinity and how mm-hmm. it is and how it possibly should be. And uh, it's hilarious. It hits home, um, and it's just like this idea that masculinity is a very outdated sort of uh, thing. And what is true, like truly masculinity, um, mm-hmm. and it, it's just like this idea of the descent of man. This um, this idea that masculinity is just, it's just, it's just so outdated. Yeah, you don't need it. You know what I mean? It's like you know, it's it's for each man. Like it's yeah. different. You know, no. you don't yeah. have to be like, oh yeah, it's fucking up it. Yeah, it's not masculinity. That's bullshit. No. You know what I mean? But, um, it's, it's just amazing. Tits are awesome. Just, just. Put it I mean, no, no. I would like a pair. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. Gonna... Mind my, my yeah. milk all the time. I squirt I, I everywhere. I wish I had some Kelly to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Kelly's Kelly is vocalizing herself more on the boot club. She also posted her good reads up there as well. We're good read friends now, so mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so go and check out the Nerdy Up North boot club. Yes. And as I said, pl- please, if you found us on YouTube, join us on any which way we can. We do it on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter. Um, we are like nerdy um, herbies. Yes. We are literally everywhere. Yes. There and are you... dozens of us, literally dozens, <laughs> dozens of us. <laughs> and, if you do, and if you don't watch us on YouTube, if you want to listen to us on all the audio devices, we're literally on all the different places you can get podcasts. Some of the places, I don't even know how we are there, but yeah, we are there. there. We're um, just there. And yes, it, it, cool. all, episodes go, all episodes of everything to do with Nerdy Up North's production. Mm-hmm. Are we a production now? Oh, all God. goes. Didn't, up, put yeah. more, didn't put more pressure on us, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> Too late. Oh, we all go up, but we go up. The conglomerate goes... that's taken over the world. We are there the new are. Disney now, guys. But yeah, um, <laughs> no, 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 no hell. I would love some <laughs> Disney money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all episodes of the audio go up on a Tuesday. Um, if you if you're feeling a bit 
mm-hmm. you know, saucy. There's some old episodes of Monsters you can go and either listen to or watch on YouTube. The fucking class. Just saying, back on the 8th of January. Yep, and yep. trekking up north as well. And don't forget, oh, Jake, <laughs> Jake, and uh, Jake and Adam yes. is live on uh, Monday, normally around nine o'clock. The late boys, them ones, uh, they, they yes. do go live out on Twitch where they're doing the Ramble Cast and they talk about different games. I believe this week's episode, well, tomorrow's episode is about oh. Mario Party. Um, oh, excellent. So they'll be discussing that, and then it normally goes up on YouTube the day after. Um, and then it goes up on the. Audio the following Tuesday. Yes, because Jake likes. I'm to always take, a week uh, behind. Jake's the smart one and edits stuff and takes out all yes. the bad stuff, which, which <laughs> yes, I don't he does. do. <laughs> we just slap that shit on there. Jake is such a. I'm not. Rem- I'm one of those that says I can't take a second out of this because it's all fucking gold. It's all gold. It's all gold, <laughs> baby. Oh, what a way to fucking end! It's so, yes. all gold. So gold. 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 <laughs> oh wait, wait. Oh no. Eighties. Eighties. <laughs> As we fade the black store, same bad time, <laughs> same, same bad time, same bad channel. Stay nerdy, everyone. Bye. Bye.